All right, so I had to use someone else's fucking tier list because um, this website's retarded. But luckily, this has 13 of the 14 restaurants that iDubs covered. Um, as far as uh, the report of the week, I think it has most of them, but I'm mostly focused on iDubs. But I am going to address some points that the report of the week made. Now, first of all, I do want to say in advance that Domino's, um, iDubs got pissed when he was going about his presidential review tier listing. Um, I think something is very overlooked in the sense that there's the old Domino's and the new Domino's. And for me, the new Domino's, it's, it's great. You know what? I'll, I'll put that up right here. I think it's B tier. It's got, you know, it's not original pizza. Uh, it, I feel like they just went over to the Krusty Krab and stole Mr. Krab's formula for it. But it's good, you know, it's, it's nothing amazing, but it's definitely good. It leaves a good taste in your mouth. Now, the old Domino's. Dubs got mad when people were talking about how the old Domino's pizza tastes like cardboard. Now, it is the texture, yes. Um, they're not saying they've chewed cardboard, thought about it, you fucking ignoramus. I love you, by the way. It's not the fact that it looks or tastes like cardboard, really. It, they're just abbreviating what they're trying to say. They're trying to say the texture is just like cardboard, and it, it feels like fucking garbage quality. It feels like you could just pick it up with the purchase of something else. It didn't even feel like food. So because of that, um, I'm going to do something a little bit weird here. So I'm going to do two things here. Um, Panda Express is going to represent the old Domino's, but it's also going to represent Panda Express. Now, Panda Express, in my opinion, they're fucking retarded. Like, I can make better Chinese food in a microwave. And it's weird because I've never had food that's even room temperature, at least, with Panda Express. It's always been cold. It's felt like some dumbass teenager grabbed it and just chucked it on a plastic plate. Chipotle, um, I haven't been there often, but the times I have, um, it's gave me very bad gas, of course, but that's just a Mexican thing. Now, I do like that they have quite a bit of variation to their menu, um, and a lot of people like them. But because of that, a lot of dumbass white girls like them and give them kind of a bad rep. So I think I'm going to put them in C tier, but know that it is high C tier. I'd say it's about C plus. KFC, yeah, they're they're good. Um, like Idub said, not sure on their opinion about slavery. So that's going to dock them one tier, keep in mind. But their chicken's all right, so I'm going to put them in C tier. Now Burger King, Burger King's definitely an eh. Um, it, ironically, I find their, um, fries much better than McDonald's and their burgers a lot shittier than McDonald's, but, um, there's, there's nothing really much to say about them. Unlike these other, hell, even Panda Express has a thing. Burger King doesn't really have a thing. I know it's in the name Burger King, but like I said, their burgers are generic as fuck. So for that, I'm going to put them in D tier. Subway F tier. If you argue with that, you're retarded. Taco Bell, iDubs mentioned, no one can replace Taco Bell. No one can replace Taco Bell. That doesn't mean they're good, though. He put them in B tier. I'm going to put them in C tier because have you had Taco Bell? It's fucking disgusting. Certain things are good, but for the most part, there's virtually no calories in anything you order. And if there is, it's disgusting soupy cheese and this weird chunky beef. It's not ground beef. It feels like lightly crushed beef. So C tier. Arby's uh, cannot have my meat, so they're going in fucking D tier. Now, Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A, I, I don't know anyone who genuinely dislikes Chick-fil-A. Every time I've been there, they've had great food. I'd say they have A-plus food, but at the same time, their sauce is... They have to put marijuana or cocaine or something in their sauce, and I know that sounds like a stretch, but it's that good. So for that reason, it's jumping them up to S tier. Pizza Hut, it gets a lot of shit. Um, just because they don't have the most magical pizza. Um, I've never had a problem with their pizza. I've actually thought it was a lot better than most pizza places. I don't really have anything objective to say about it, unlike a lot of these other places, but in my opinion, B. Wendy's. Oh boy, where to start with this? Now, Wendy's a couple years ago um, went ape shit with their advertising deal, whatever you want to call that. And they were going off, I guess, roasting people online, and it kind of brought up their publicity, and they were roasting McDonald's and stuff for their food. But have you ever seen a Wendy's burger? They're fucking squares. Now, I know burgers themselves aren't natural, but something about that in my head has always bugged me. Why the fuck would I eat a square? That's disgusting. It just looks so weird. And even, even the shape itself is stupid. 
Because of the way you shape your burgers, the corners are always lukewarm. They're never well cooked. So for that reason, I'm actually putting Wendy's in E tier. Just totally shit food. The only reason they're not in F tier is because of their funny ass advertising campaign a couple years ago. Little Caesars, it seems a lot of people dislike. Um, I don't know why. I'd never dislike their pizza. Again, pizza, it's, to be honest, it's not hard to impress me with pizza, but it's not hard to unimpress me either. So they're going in B tier. All right, Panera Bread. This wasn't really covered, but um, Panera Bread, it's got some good food. It's got, like, you know, mac and cheese, breads, of course. Um, now, I do think they're wildly overpriced. Um, on this whole list, I'd say they have the most overpriced food in general. Because of that, that's going to dock them a tier. And at the same time, they, they do have a little bit of uh, unique menus. They're not anything, like, mind-blowing. I've never had this anywhere else, but it's, it's a nice mix-up from the rest of these. So for that, I'm going to say B tier. Now, McDonald's... McDonald's is a very unique case because it feels like McDonald's is always changing and yet in certain ways staying the exact same. You could always go there and get like an inedible burger unlike some of these other places. The ambience itself, I know a lot of McDonald's are remodeling at least around me, um, but especially old McDonald's, they're, they're just so shitty, it's unbelievable. Now they, their chocolate shakes always taste like rat poison. I've never tasted rat poison, obviously, but that's what I'd imagine it tastes like. It, it, their chocolate shakes, like, 8 out of 10 times taste like some sort of fucking poison to me. So, besides that, their burgers are pretty good. Their fries are pretty good. If they were salted more, they'd be great. And their nuggets are... They're usually heated up, which is a lot more than what most fast food companies can say. So, for that, putting it in B tier. Papa John's, what can I fucking say about this place? So besides their atrocious CEO, um, their pizza's fucking like... It, I think it's the definition of mundane, honestly. It's, it's a prime example of it, at least. In my opinion, it's going in D tier. Popeyes, ooh baby. If you've seen the lady in the commercials, she's like... She's ready to do anything to get you to eat her chicken. The difference between her and KFC, really, is that she... Fucking, she's got those biscuits, man. I'm, I'm talking about more ways than one. She's definitely going above KFC. But I do want to point out that Popeyes always goes that extra step, you know? You, at least in my experience, I've never gotten a bad biscuit, bad chicken, undercooked chicken, anything like that. It's always good, it always tastes very fresh, and it tastes just delicious. So that Popeyes is actually going in A tier, in my opinion. Never had a bad experience there. Steak and Shake. I almost feel like I should do an old and new for this one, too. Um, back in the day, around 2014-ish, uh, Steak and Shake, you could go in there and you could be absolutely sure that you're going to get some great food, some skinny but delicious fries with their seasoning, and a, an alright milkshake, if not good. Now, I don't know what's changed, but the, the three most local, hold on, the three most local Steak and Shake, Steak and Shakes that are near me, I always have to wait at least 30 minutes. Um, two of those times I can vouch, there was one or two other parties there apart from mine, which was never big. It was never more than three people. So Steak and Shake, it, it feels like they magically forgot how to make their own fucking food. Um, so for that, I'm going to have to put them in C tier. Sonic, holy fucking shit. I feel like Sonic is different in every single city you go to. Um, Sonic, close to where I live, is just fucking awful. None of the employees care about... They don't even care enough to pretend to do their jobs. You'll order and you'll never fucking see them again. Um, I think out of the... Out, out of the times I've been to Sonic, I think about 10% of the time I've actually gotten food. The other times we just fucking left because we could have gone to two places and ordered food in the time it would have taken them to pretend to get us food. But the, that 10% was pretty damn good, so for that I'm going to put it in E tier. Qdoba, I haven't actually been too much, but the times I have, it, it kind of, I know it's not the same exact food, but it feels like premium Chipotle. Um, it, it's good, it, it feels very refined in the sense that they don't throw some shit that's going to make your ass explode on a plate and serve it to you, and I'm always satisfied with them. So even though I don't go there much, I'm actually going to put it in A tier. 
Jimmy John's is Subway if Subway did every single thing right. If they didn't have that dumbass child predator mascot for a while, not mascot, but you know, he he was the the face of the company for a while. If they didn't make you make your own sandwich while telling someone else what to do like some dumbass ratatouille idea, um and if they actually delivered and they made good sandwiches, then that's what uh Subway would be. What I just described is Jimmy John's. Jimmy John's, again, never had a bad experience there. Um, plus, they also sell bread for, I think, 99 cents. That doesn't sound like a big deal, but for Jimmy John's, it is. So for that, I'm putting it in A tier. All right, Firehouse Subs. Firehouse Subs, um, it's in the same category as Panera in the sense that they feel definitely overpriced. Um, just because you're supporting firefighters doesn't mean you get to charge me a shit ton of money because I want some fucking subs. But they, they have okay sized subs. Their food is okay. Everything about them is really okay except for the prices. So for that, I'm actually going to put them in C tier. Starbucks, I've, I've never really liked. I don't drink coffee or shit like that often. But the stuff that I have had, it was very quickly, within the span of about six to eight months, overshadowed by some other local coffee shop immediately. So for that, I'm actually going to put them in D tier. The only reason they're not lower is because they're they're popular. Um, well, that's not a good reason. The only reason they're not in E tier is because I don't know. So they're going in fucking E tier. Now, the rest of these places, I either don't even know, or they're local, or I've been to so few times that I don't want to put them in a category. So this is going to be my final tier list. A couple things to mention. I think the report of the week made really good points in his, and iDubbbz of course made good points in his, but since he's a comedy channel, he's joking all the time and serious all the time, and I don't think he realizes that from a viewer perspective. So for example, he was like, uh, oh Wendy's, I love Wendy's because they've got a sexy mascot. At the beginning he was talking about how he's only ranking fast food businesses for their food, and then he contradicts that. So that's just one um, example. I, I don't think he paid much attention to a lot of his explanations. Um, ever, anyone can make a tier list. Anyone can put these places in a tier list. But to justify why in an objective way is the important part. Um, and that's what I feel like uh, the report of the week mastered. Now this is just my opinion, but for the most part, it's uh, polished. I'd, I'd make a few changes if someone could make a good point. But otherwise, this is my final... Uh, my final tier list. Thank you guys for watching. Um, I definitely go check out iDubs and the Report of the Week's tier lists. Um, and thanks for iDubs for inspiring everyone to do this, honestly. Tier lists aren't a new thing, but he made a great point about that too, that you, you put a tier list with almost any subject and it immediately becomes interesting. It doesn't become interesting unless you actually explain why you like that place. Anyone can, any fucking two-year-old can have an opinion. But to explain why is the important part. If you guys are going to make a tier list, I definitely recommend keeping it um, as objective as you can. Um, and don't favor any other place for any unfair reason. Alright, thanks for watching.